Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus again today. I'm Trace, and this is episode 4 of 5 on engines. So far we've talked about what engines are, how they work, who invented them, and even the refining process for the fuel that we put into internal combustion engines. But today we're going to talk about alternates to those ICEs. Things that we might use today, but maybe not. Trust me, it's going to be cool. So make sure you subscribe, stick around if you haven't subscribed to Test 2 Plus yet. Do that, you can do that right here. But we now know how ICEs work. But what about things like hybrid engines? We briefly touched on this earlier. We know they were first invented in 1900 when an ICE was installed in a carriage. It would charge a generator, which would power an electric motor. But of course, that technology has gotten a lot better in the last hundred years. We've made a lot of changes. Firstly, before we get into hybrid engines, I wanna say that this is just one way hybrid engines are integrated into traditional cars, right? Every company found a different solution to the hybrid engine setup. They don't all use the same setup. But in general, these are the basics. A gasoline power internal combustion engine goes through a series of steps, which turns the transmission, which turns the drive shaft and makes the wheels rotate. An electric car has an electric motor, which would turn the transmission, which would turn the shafts and make the car go. But a hybrid, like the name says, uses both that ICE and that electric motor together, maximizing fuel efficiency depending on the job that needs doing. They fit together differently, but they all basically do the same thing. Now, your regular, just non-hybrid car, that has electrical components to it. The car battery is used to start the car, it keeps your radio going when your car isn't running, and when your car is running, it acts like a voltage stabilizer and it's charged by the turning of the engine. The alternator charges your battery, keeps it going. So it's essentially an electrical generator that powers all the little gadgets inside of your car on top of powering the actual drivetrain. But hybrids, they have an even bigger electrical component, an advanced electrical component, and that acts as both a motor that can move the car from time to time and a generator that produces electricity to run the car. The electric motor can help the internal combustion engine along in accelerating, say, climbing hills, and so on and so forth, and that makes the ICE smaller. A smaller engine is really the goal here, and I know that sounds weird, because usually when you think of cars, you think of bigger engines, more power, right? Well, hybrid cars allow a smaller engine to have a similar amount of power. Hybrid cars can run on electrical power alone as well, and those two things create huge amounts of efficiency that can reduce gas mileage, which is the point of a hybrid car. Hybrid cars uh, at low speeds of around 15 miles an hour won't use any gas at all. You're usually cruising around your neighborhood or something, stop signs, that's super quiet, right? That just wee sound, that's the electric motor. But if you're on the freeway, it's the other way around. The electric motor is mostly off and the gasoline engine is being used. The reason being, gasoline can create a lot of power and it's really good at sustaining that energy release. Electricity doesn't work like that. It's constantly using a high amount of power to keep sustaining. It's better when you're kind of stopping and starting or going slow. That's the power of a hybrid. And when you brake or you take your foot off the gas, hybrids actually let that motor turn off because they don't need it. The electricity is powering everything. And then on top of that, when you push your foot on the brake or you're just coasting, they're gaining electricity from the turning of the wheels or from the braking. It's crazy. It's like a way to charge the generator or charge the whole system just by using the kinetic energy you, you've got. All of this makes hybrid cars more efficient because bigger engines, more steel inside of the engine compartment, that's heavier. That requires more energy to move, to overcome that inertia, and to keep it going, which requires more fuel. If you can lighten all of those components, if you can make them out of lighter materials, you can have a smaller engine, those things make the overall car lighter and make your gas mileage increase. And on top of that, when you stop, there's no fuel at all being used. Electrical cars, that just takes the engine compartment and takes it over with the electric engine altogether. There are a couple of different 
types of electric cars, uh, and it all depends on how they get their power. The plug-in car, which is pretty famous right now, that's when you connect an outlet at your house to the car, and that powers the electric motor, usually via batteries. But there's another one called the hydrogen fuel cell, which is technically an electric car. The car combines hydrogen and oxygen, which produces electricity. You don't have to plug it in. You fill it up with pressurized hydrogen at a fueling station. The hydrogen reacts with oxygen. It's a very simple chemical process, and that uses electricity then to power a motor. If you want to know more about it, it's a platinum catalyst that splits the hydrogen into positive and negatively charged electrons, and the electrons are then sent into a cathode, which creates an electrical current, blah, 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 blah. The problem is, even though the output of that is water vapor, and that's very clean, you could probably just drink it if you got a cup and were able to condense it in there. Even though that's clean, the making of the hydrogen fuel is not. There's a lot of polluting involved in that. And it might be enough pollution that it counteracts any of the benefits of driving the hydrogen car in the first place. However, an article just came out while we were researching this episode in Popular Mechanics, which talks about if we could use solar power to make this fuel, change the whole game, solve all of these pollution problems. Your basic electric cars though, back to those, just batteries. Throw some batteries in there. They're the heart of the car, they make the car go, and the electrical power from the batteries goes right to the wheels through the motor, and that power is signaled, interestingly enough, you probably don't know this, by two potentiometers. They're attached to the gas pedal, and this all works as a safety measure. So if you have two and they don't match, the car knows something's up. But if they do match, that's all right. It's referred to as a variable resistor. It's pretty cool. Anyway, like with hybrids, electrical cars, are different from car to car. They're different from manufacturer to manufacturer. There's no one way to build an internal combustion car, to build a hybrid car, to build an electric car. There's no one way to build any car. It's kind of cool to think of all of the different ways that humanity has attempted to essentially move us from one place to another quickly, right? And we're doing that by creating all of these different types of engines. And it gets even cooler, and there are all sorts of alternative fuel vehicles out there today. Hybrids are just one of those, and they might be one of the better choices right now, depending on what you need. They make any vehicle more fuel efficient pretty easily, and not unlike our sponsor for this series, Toyota. The new Toyota RAV4 Hybrid, how far will you take it? Thank you very much, Toyota, for sponsoring this episode of Test 2 Plus. Let us know down in the comments what you think. Do you want an electric car, a hybrid car? you want to stick with your internal combustion engine? You can tell us down there. Make sure you subscribe so you get all of our episodes of Test 2 Plus. But tomorrow, we're going to talk about how car engines are going to be going forward. What's the future of the car engine? Thanks for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow on Test 2 Plus. Yeah.